Okay, first and foremost, I want to thank everybody for uh, taking the time to get out, to come out and um, be with us. Um, of course, everybody now wants to, of course, I have to admit everybody, sorry about that. Um, but um, I wanted to talk about a, a topic. I have a lot of people um, that come to me and ask me um, a lot about what I do and how I do it. Um, so some of you people know me. I see a lot of familiar faces. I see Dewan Savage. I see Lewis. A few, I see a few other people on here that I know really well. I spoke to before. Um, so uh, I am an infill land developer. Um, so I pride myself and my company prides ourselves on doing really quality, high-end, um, modern infill housing developments, um, townhomes, single-family homes. Um, we try to, you know, assess highest and best use, you know, at all times. Um, I've been in real estate business for about, gosh, about 25 years now. Um, I am a developer and I am also a builder. So I handle both construction and development. And we're going to talk about how those things are very, very different. Um, so um, people always ask me uh, a really a question that comes up a lot is, you know, how do you get into this business? How do I see, excel at this business? And I tell people all the time that the first thing you have to understand is land valuation. Um, you cannot really get anywhere in this business unless you have an understanding of what it takes to, value, to, to, to put value on land. I'm going to share my screen here. All right. All right, hold on one second. Okay. Okay. All right, so the reason why I've put this together this way is because we are going to talk about a lot of, hold on a second, I got to stop this thing, I guess, from zooming. I got to see how to get it to pause on one spot. Auto play. I don't want it to auto play. I want it to not auto play. All right. Actually, let me escape this. We'll just do it this way. All right. So, um, the reason why um, I put this 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 particular deck together this way is because there are a lot of things, a lot of terms and terminology that I'm going to mention, you know, over and over again. And some of these things cross between different fields. Um, so we're going to go and first look at the very top of that orange ribbon there. Um, and these are some questions that we're going to answer. And these are very important for you understanding land development. Um, the first question is, what is land worth? Um, why is land valuation important? Um, what factors affect land value? Sorry, I spelled that wrong. And where is the real value in real estate? So we're going to start out under what is land worth? Um, a lot of times I have um, realtors, I have wholesalers come to me with a land deal and they want to know basically, you know, you know, they want to sell me a piece of land. And the issue is, is they come to me and they don't know what the land is worth. Um, so sometimes um, they come to me and and I can look at it in five minutes. I'll say, hey, it's not it's not worth what you're trying to sell it for. Um, and a lot of confusion comes with people from you know how do I how do I I get to a valuation for what a piece of dirt is worth? Um, and I'll tell you this too in the development game. Um, 
if you're bringing me a piece of property and it has a, a, a home on it, for instance, um, I tell people all the time, you can either sell me your house or you can sell me the land. I don't want both. If I'm buying the land for development, your house just means I have to spend more money to tear it down. And if you're selling me your house, then it's just your house. You can't sell me both. It's going to be one or the other. Um, in the basics of land valuation, a piece of the next question, of course, well, how do you figure out, Kenny, what you can put on it? Well, there's going to be a number of things that you have to look at to figure that, that out. The second question is, how much will it cost me to make it ready, ready for vertical construction? And the last question is, what will my development sell for? You need to know this so you can understand what the land is worth. Um, I have a, a fairly basic formula that I use. Different developers have a different threshold for, for, for where they are. But for me, basically, I want the land is going to be 20% of the gross value of what I can put on the land. So if I can put $2 million worth of real estate on the land, then I will pay $400,000 for the piece of property. If I can put four million dollars, you know, worth of real estate on the land, I'll pay eight hundred thousand dollars for the property. Now, that that valuation or that number, that twenty percent number, I'm trying to get to, of course, is for pad ready. And what I mean by pad ready is that. Sorry, we still have people coming late to the party. So what I mean by pad ready is that let's say that I am I've got a uh, a piece of property that I can put four units on, um, but along with those four units, I have to get four sewer taps, four water taps, um, electrical. I've got to do some grading. Well, I'm going to take that twenty percent value. And I'm going to back out my cost for those four sewer taps. So if those four sewer taps are $60,000 and I said I'd buy, you know, the, the, the land is worth, what I can put on is $2 million. Well, 20% of $2 million is $400,000. Those water and sewer taps cost me $60,000. Then now I, I'll pay, you know, $140,000. I'll say pay $60,000 less for that property. Um, so... Those are the things that you want to factor in to any piece of land that you value. Another thing you need to understand is, well, how do I come to the value of what will fit on that piece of property? Well, if I'm in a, in a neighborhood and I'm building townhomes and I know that, hey, townhomes are going for, at a certain size, are going for, you know, 400000 a piece, and I know I can fit 10, 10 townhomes on there, then I know I have a, 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 a value of $4 million. And if I have a, a value of $4 million, 10% of that is 400,000, 20% of that is 800,000. But now I say, okay, Ken, you've got to get, you've got to get um, 10 water and sewer taps on there. And that cost for you is gonna be $100,000. You're gonna back that out of that money. Um, once you guys get into more complex development and you understand that, okay, well, you're going to need uh, temporary erosion control, sediment. You're going to have to have a stormwater system and other things, and that's going to cost you another four hundred thousand dollars. Then that's going to back that that number down even further. Um, but we're going to start with the basics: infill projects. And what I mean by an infill lot, an infill lot is a lot that previously had a home on it, and you don't have to make any real major infrastructure changes to that lot to develop that lot. Um, so that's what I, we do a lot of, a lot of infill lots. Um, the second point in the band at the top, why is land valuation important? Um, because you can't get to the end if you don't know where you're starting. So if I say, hey, or, or you, Mr. Wholesaler, or Mr. Agent says, hey, you can fit 30 townhomes on here and you can sell them for, for $300,000 a piece. That's, 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 you know, $9 million. Well, that's great. 
But if it costs me $7 million to develop the land, it, it may not be that great after it's all said and done. So you have to know, first of all, to get to a valuation number, you have to know what is the gross amount that is going to fit on that piece of property. And one thing that I'm searching for as a developer all the time is highest and best use. Um, if I can fit 10 units on a property, I'm not putting six on the property. I'm not putting seven units on the property. I'm not putting eight units on the property. I'm putting 10 units on the property. If I can fit 50,000 square feet on a property, I am putting all 50,000 square feet on that property. I am not going to put anything less than that. I am always trying to, to, to reach highest and best use. Okay? Another reason why land valuation is important. There are much higher margins in development than there are in construction. Um, and let me explain that to you. So I do both functions. I am a developer and I also have an unlimited general contractor's license. So I can both develop my projects and also construct my projects. And the difference is this, development is preparing you know, for vertical construction. You improve the value of the land um, to make it ready for vertical construction. It may or may not include moving any dirt whatsoever. It may not include any construction whatsoever. So let's say, for instance, I buy a, a lot, okay? And there used to be a single family home on that lot. Um, but the lot is zoned in such a way that I can fit, you know, let's say four, four units on the lot. Um, but the only thing that it really takes is to put the proper plan together, the proper surveys together and everything, put a plan together, have it approved by the city, and then that lot and have it subdivided and that lot can, can hold four properties. Well, I can go through that whole process and now I've got four separate pads to sell. And I use the same math. Say, okay, let's say I bought the lot for two hundred thousand, um, but I split it into four different pads. And each one of those pads, I can do a house for let's say six hundred thousand. So twenty percent of six hundred thousand is one hundred and twenty thousand. I got four lots, four hundred and eighty thousand. I paid two hundred thousand for it. By me just developing those lots, I can turn around and sell them to a builder for that 120, and I'll make that spread from that. So as a developer, there is more money in me doing the development work than the margin is that he's probably going to make on construction. And any of you guys that are in construction and you just do construction, you can attest to the fact that if you're a, a good builder, you might get 20 to 25 percent margin on what you build, but that's it. If you get into development and you put the right deal together, you could exponentially, you know, outpace that number because you're, you're not bound by the commodities of building. And so in the last blank down there, it says a building is just a lot of commodities put together. So I'm going to make this point and I hope you guys understand it. So a commodity is an item that is, you know, worth what it's worth at that time and place. That's it. So if you go to Lowe's today and you buy a two by four, that's what that two by four is worth. If you buy a hundred two by fours, that's what those two by fours are worth. They're not worth any more or worth any less. Okay. If you go buy a nut, a bolt, a toilet, a sink, um, it, is, it is worth what it is worth on that particular day. All a house or a building is, is a bunch of commodities put together. And that value, really, there's not that much margin in that value. There's not much margin. You can't only charge so much more for those commodities than, than what they're actually worth. And I'll prove it to you. So if I take a property that I build, let's say over in um, Seversville, a single family home that I'm selling for $950,000. If I take those same commodities and I move those commodities to another neighborhood, let's say I move them to Druid Hills, same exact house, the value of that property, totally different. If I move that same house to Myers Park, 
value of that house totally different. If I move that 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 same property to to Calabasas or to uh, um, Port Jeff on uh, Long Island or to Miami, Florida, totally different value. The commodities are all worth the same. The same. The underlying value is in the land. And the faster you guys understand that the way you really make money in development is making good land deals. That's what I do. I make very good land deals. Do I make some marginal construction? Do I build nice stuff? Yes, I do. But the money that I really make is because I make great land deals. And the sooner you guys start thinking about real estate as land, that's really what it is. The commodity that you put on top of it, yes, is the commodity. But that commodity is, is, is worth what it's worth. It's not worth any more or any less itself than what you paid for. We're going to go to the next ribbon. What factors affect land value? So one thing that I've talked about um, to you guys is understanding density and zoning. So I'm going to click over to this second tab over here. So this is something that all of you need to know and understand. These are the residential zoning districts in Charlotte. Okay. They have multifamily districts too, but these are the residential zoning districts and you need to understand these. The majority of the property in Charlotte falls within these districts. Um, I have a sweet spot, which is right here, R8. This is an amazing zoning district and the UDO is probably gonna destroy this or at least parts of it. And you may ask these numbers at the top, like what do they mean? So we're gonna go through this chart. I'm trying to explain to you basically and this is going to be a very important part of your valuation process um anyone that knows me um nevo is on he can tell you when you call me with a land deal and you say hey kenny i've got this piece of property i'm going to ask you two questions how big is it and what is it zoned first two questions i'm going to ask you every single time if it's zoned r3 r4 r5 I'm probably going to say I'm more than likely not interested. And the reason why it's very difficult to get density in those. There's not a lot of R6 in Charlotte. There's some, but R8, if it's R8, I'm going to be very interested. So all of these numbers, this R, of course, means residential. The three, the four, the five, the six, and the eight basically means number of units per acre loosely okay so the lower the number the less dense the zoning is so if you look at in all of these maximum floor ratio so what that means is you can only cover 50 percent of the lot with the footprint of the house now i can i can build up and build you know six thousand square feet or ten thousand square feet but i can't i can't but on a 5,000 square foot lot, I can't cover all 5,000 square feet. I can only cover half of that, okay? So as we go down here, detached dwellings, these are single family homes. So if I have a R3 lot, the minimum size, 10,000 square feet. R4 lot, 8,000 square feet. And you guys see the asterisk here and here. I will explain those in a little bit. R5, 6,000 square feet. R6, 4,500 square feet. R8, 3,500 square feet. So in R8, I only need 3,500 square feet to put a single family home. But here is where it gets interesting. When you go down to the next line, duplexes. A duplex. And I'm going to tell you this distinction in Charlotte. A duplex is simply a two family home. A duplex does not have a lot line. There's no separation. It's not a separate parcel ID. It's a two family home. But a two family town home has to have a firewall in between it for you to sell them separately. Very important part. So 
duplex dwelling, R3, 16,000 square feet. R4, 13,000, 10, 8, and 6,500. This number right here, 6,500, is a great number because if I can find a, a lot that's in R8 and it has 6,500 square feet, then I know I can fit two units on it. And let's say that I'm in a neighborhood and I know that houses are selling for $500,000. Okay? So 10% of $500,000 is $50,000. 20% of that, $100,000. Okay? Somebody comes to me and says, I got this lot in R8. It's $100,000. How big is it? Oh, it's 7,500 square feet. How much frontage does it have on it? Oh, 50 feet. Well, guess what? Because it has more than 6,500 square feet, now I can fit two units on it. Now I've reduced my pad cost from 100,000 to 50,000. If I can still get a $400,000 house on there, or say a $500,000 unit on there, now I've turned my basis from $500,000 to a million dollars. That's the difference. And as you see, as you go down to triplex and quadruplex, there are no other distinctions that allow a triplex or a quadruplex with the exception of RA in the residential zoning code. So R8 is a sweet spot, very good spot to be. You need to understand that. The next thing is we go a little further down. It also talks about, hold on a second here, minimum lot width. The next question I'm going to ask you, um, if you bring me a lot, how much frontage does it have? Okay. If you look at R3, the minimum lot frontage, and when I say frontage, that is the, the portion of the lot that abuts the street, that abuts the front of the street, the access to the lot. So R3, 70 feet, R4, 60 feet, R5, 50 feet, and then R6 and R8, 40 feet. So I already know that I only have to have a lot that's 40 feet wide. And if I have 40 feet wide and I have 3,500 square feet altogether, then I know I have enough room for a single family house. If I have 40 feet wide and I have 6,500 square feet lot, then I know I have room for two dwellings. We're going to go down further. This portion talks about minimum setback. So this minimum setback is along the right of way. And you can see these numbers. This is going to be the setback from the street to the front of your home. Okay. If you go down further, you'll talk about minimum side yard setback. With the exception of R3, all of those are five feet. So I need from my lot line to the side of the house, five feet. Minimum rear yard setback, it goes down. The least stringent is R8, which only 20 feet. And then down here at the bottom, it says minimum open space percentage. So same thing. These percentages go down and down and down and down till you have only, only 50%. So this is a tool for you to understand part of valuating land and figuring out, well, hey, what do I really have? And that's why understanding density is important. So if you bring me a lot, and you should be doing the same thing. If you see a large lot in a neighborhood, and that, that neighborhood's owned R8, that lot is worth more than possibly a, a lot of the same size that's in an R3 neighborhood, because you can't, you can't fit with so much on it. That's where the density comes in. So I've got this other part down here. More be, may be less and less may be more. Um, sometimes more units may not be the, the best way to go. So I'm going to give you a for instance. I bought um, four lots, well, three lots at the beginning of the year. Two of them were side by side. 
And if I combine those two lots, if I combine those two lots, the the square footage was over 9,500 square feet. So, hey, guess what? Great, guess what I could do? I could do a triplex, right? Great plan, I can do a triplex. Now I can get three units on there. But because you understand Charlotte and the way uh, Charlotte works as far as uh, approvals and everything, anything more than two units, so anything more than a duplex has to go through both city and county approval and it also triggers things like urban forestry urban forestry is tree safe if i do anything more than two units i have to designate a tree safe area i also have to deal with um the charlotte dot um i have to deal with um other factors also because there are more than two units um so in this situation the lot actually was a little bit more than 10,000 square feet. So what I did instead, is instead of making a triplex on the lot, I shifted the lot line for one of the lots over slightly and made sure it was more than 3,500 square feet. And then the other lot was more than 6,500 square feet. So now I could do a single family and do a duet next to it or a duplex next to it. Well, the gross value for a single family in a duplex is going to be more than three contiguous units. So actually, I'll make more money by doing one single family in a duet than I would be doing a triplex. I also will be able to do it faster because I don't have to go through but a single iteration of plan review um, for the city of Charlotte. So in that situation, even though I can do a triplex, I didn't want to do a triplex because it was going to take me more time. I was going to have to spend more money on plans, um, send, spend more money on plan review. Um, so when you go through a city review process, I've paid as much as $14,000 for the review of a single project. And that's going to add at least um, a month to 45 days to your timeline. So in that situation, you know, sometimes more is less. If I had the chance to do a quadruplex or to do two duets on two separate lots, I'm going to do two duets. And the reason why is because it's the same amount of units. They're going to sell for more. And I only have to go through a single review. So these are factors and parts about Charlotte and understanding the development process in Charlotte that if you want to go down this path, that you need to learn and understand also. Another thing that affects value, unseen cost and unseen opportunities, okay? Um, another part of understanding land and dealing with land is there are some things that you cannot see. Um, um, Sam and I had the opportunity to possibly consult this guy that went and made purchase of five acres of land. Um, we, 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 we came into the equation after um, he had purchased the five acres of land. And he got the five acres of land seemingly at a great deal. The zoning was good. Everything was great. But when we went out there, we walked the site and something wasn't right. Um, the grade seemed like it had been altered. And I knew this because um we were looking at trees and the grade was above where the roots were in the trees were at the trees so we went look back and looked at historic historical um aerial photos and we saw that the 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 uh the land had been a construction dump site they had been dumping soil and spoils from other projects on the on this project and after we did um some soil testing for him we found out that most of the soil was bad. The bill to scrape, to take away all the soil to make the land buildable was more than what he paid for for the lot. And because he didn't have any development experience, he didn't think about that being a possibility. So because of that, basically, he's going to double the price of the land just to get the land to where it's buildable. 
And those are things you, you, you can't see. That's why, depending on the project, we take certain precautions when it comes to development. Um, I like infill lots, but if it's an infill lot that I don't know in recent history, there was a house or homes on it, then probably I'm going to get soil test because I don't know if that's been used for dumping or, or, or for what. Um, we recently bought a lot over in Druid Hills, and I already had known just by looking at the lot that it had been un grade had brought, been brought in artificially. Um, I spent an extra $25,000 on um, concrete caissons to build a house on it, but I, I anticipated that cost because I'd already known that the grade was bad. So for the amount that I, I, I bought the lot for, I subtracted the cost that I knew it was going to take to remedy the issues that were there. So these are things, too, that affect the value of, you know, land. The last ribbon, where is the value in real estate, okay? And this is the part that I talked about for some of you that got here late, land, okay? Houses are great. I love houses. I love building them. I love building townhomes. But the value is in the dirt. Don't get confused, okay? Identifiably scarce resource on this planet. The only thing we know for sure how much there is, is air, water, and land. I have no idea how much gold is buried below the earth. I don't, don't know how, how much oil is under the earth. I don't know how many diamonds are underneath the earth, but I do how much know how much land there is. And there's not gonna be any more land. It is identifiably scarce resource. I know exactly how much it is on this planet. And that being the case, that land will always have value, always will have value. And as time pro progresses and our population grows on this planet, that resource will be more and more scarce. Um, along with that, you need to understand, <clears throat> like we talked about for the zoning, zoning is more powerful than size. If I have a 10 acre lot or a one acre lot depends on the zoning and the location that one acre lot can be worth many many times more than that 10 acres is uh i know of a buddy in south end that sold an eight an acre lot for over six million dollars one acre lot six million bucks i know some land that i can buy in mint hill uh, one acre for, for, for less than $100,000. I know 10 acres that I can buy for, for less than a half a million dollars. So the size of the property is not necessarily, you know, an indicator of the value of property. Again, if we go back to the, some of the things we talked about in the beginning, land is worth what you can put on it. If I can put a, a, a high rise worth $300 million, I don't care if it's the size of a postage stamp. It's worth arguably a lot more than 100 acres that I can't put that on. So understanding your zoning, understanding your density is a very, very important part of you evaluating it and, and, and figuring out what land is really worth. Um, the last note here, location. And people say this all the time, location, 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 location. It's true. Um, I have profited from having an eye for where people are going, not where they've been necessarily, but where they're going. Um, if you are uh, in and around the Charlotte area and you know anything about Charlotte, you know the South End area is booming. Um, everyone and everybody wants to be there. Um, but as places get to be prolific and prices start to go up, people start to bleed out. So now that that South End area has bled down South Boulevard further than many people would have thought it has. The same thing with the west side of town. When I started developing over on um, in Seversville by JCSU, uh, I remember my first real development. I did six houses on State Street. And at the time, um, I think I bought one of those lots for $20,000. And at the time, I was trying to market and sell houses. There were six of them in a row. 
for, I started out around $350,000. And I had plenty of people, a lot of friends that have known me in real estate for many, many years. And they're like, Kenny, there's no way in the world anyone's buying anything on State Street for $350,000. Right now on State Street, well, by the time I was finished with those, we were over $600,000. And now on State Street, um, a friend of mine, Ali, sold a single family for nine thirty. dollars um, He's got another one down the street he's going to do for about $1.3. We listed one today, one block back for $950,000. And this is all from probably 2016 to now. Um, and with things that attract people to locations, that's where you need to turn your eye as far as the possibility of development. So that streetcar that goes down all the way down Trade Street and Johnson C. Smith University, that has just made a very easy segue for people to get to, you know, uptown into South End into other places. So prices in that area have exploded and we were in early, so we've profited from that explosion. Additionally, we're always looking for the next place. Where is development going after this? What's the next location? Where are things going next? Um, we, uh, we've picked a couple neighborhoods we really like. Um, some of you that know me know which neighborhoods I'm, I'm moving towards, and we're gonna start doing the same thing and building those neighborhoods out. Um, but you understanding land value and land valuation is the first key to getting into develop, to the development. If you don't understand like what the, the underlying asset is worth, it's gonna be very difficult to have a shot. It's very, very difficult. Um, and again, like I said, for me, my rule is 20% of gross. 20% of gross, that's what the land's worth. But it's gotta be pad ready, it's gotta be ready to go. If I gotta put a retaining wall and, and, and prop up half of it, or I gotta bring in water and sewer or power or whatever else, then, then I'm gonna reduce that number by what it costs me to do that. Um, additionally, you guys have to understand also that just because a piece of property is zoned and sized correctly, it may not be a great property. Um, there are a lot of properties on West Boulevard, great zoning, but um, there's one I looked at before. Um, I think it's almost an acre, and I think somebody on the I think somebody on, the, on this call I think showed it to me. I think the property is only 65 feet wide, um, but it's probably 300 feet deep. Okay, and it's zoned properly. So you're like, okay, Kenny, this this is it's it's wide enough, and, and it's huge. Well, the issue becomes, all right, that super deep long property. If I want to develop the whole thing, well, how do I get all the way back there? Oh, I got to build a road. Okay, I got to build a road. All right, on that road, we're going to need curb, we're going to need gutter. And then, well, who's going to take care of that road in, in, in perpetuity? Who's going to take care of that road? Well, what you want to do is build that road to DOT specification, and you want to gift that road back to the city so they can take care of it. So you don't have to take care of it. But if you look at the cost to build that road, that 600 feet or whatever it is to the back of that property, and then you're saying, oh, well, now I got to get water and sewer back to all, all of these particular properties. And because it's so big, I've got to do storm water and I've got to do soil, I mean, I've got to do uh, sediment retention. Um, as an example, we have a 14 unit um townhome project going on right now on Rockwell Church Road. Um, the site is just below an acre. My development cost, my horizontal com construction was $600,000 just to do the horizontal. That's for water, sewer, stormwater, sediment retention. There's a retaining wall in there that's paving the roads, that's curb, that's gutter, those things. $600,000 just for that. Now, because the lot could hold 14 units, it's still in the price that we got it for, it still made it viable. But these are some of the considerations that you have to have when you're coming up with a valuation for a piece of property. Um, I would implore all of you guys to download the, um, the zoning ordinance for Mecklenburg County. 
with the new EDO, EDO it's, it's due to change um, soon. I don't know exactly when, but this is the chart for, um, again, for, for single family or residential. The multifamily um, chart is even better. Um, we're developing in a multifamily 17 zoning, which is 17 units per acre. Um, R22 is a great, um, a great zoning density. Um, there's also what's called UMUD. There's UR1. Um, UR1 is urban residential. One, you have urban residential. Two, these allow you to have um, even more density on smaller lots. Um, but as far as the valuation piece, this is the first step to you understanding really what it takes to develop. And if you are properly able to go and find a site and possibly develop it, you may not have to do any construction at all. You can take the site from, hey, I know it can fit this. You can pay the civil engineer, the architect, and the plan review cost and sell the thing as a package. Say, hey, listen, this is approved for 14 pads. Um, the civil work has already been passed. Here you go. Here's 14 pads. You can sell each one of them for $400,000 a piece. You take 20% of that number, you know what that's going to be. And you can go and develop a project and never have to, you don't, need to, you don't have to have a license to be a developer. I have to have a license to be a general contractor, but you don't have to have a license to be a developer. You go and develop something tomorrow. Um, would I suggest that without some knowledge? You know, probably not. Um, but that is... That's basically what it comes down to. Oh, one second here. All right. So those are the basics um, for everyone, just as far as the uh, evaluation piece and as far as trying to assess what a piece of land is worth. And again, other people have different valuation methods. Some people's threshold may be 25%, minus 20. I want to be super conservative. I want to make sure that I have plenty of money to do the vertical construction for the project. I have plenty of money just in case I, I run into something that I wasn't expecting. Um, but that's my metric for trying to understand what land is worth. Um, other than that, um, I think that other than the zoning code and, of course, just comps, understanding like, Looking at and seeing, hey, what is this? What is what? What are going to? What are four pads going to be worth? This is the stepping stone for you people to go to the possibly the next step and say, okay, Kenny, I, I understand the valuation piece. I understand what this is worth. Now, how do I go to the next step? How do I go from, oh, I know what this is worth, to actually making a play to actually develop a site? And um, I'll be honest with you guys, the only reason that I, I have a general contractor's license and I build is because I have more control of the process. I can follow the process from development all the way through to the end. Um, but I'll be honest with you, and those people out here that do build, um, if you can get away from building and make money without actually having to do the building, you know, hey, I, I might, I might want to do that. Um, and I'm not saying that that, um, right now we really take pride in the product that we do. I don't know if everyone on, on, on the call has seen what we build, um, but we build a very unique product in Charlotte. We, um, um, we build a, a modern product that you probably will not get in the spec form anywhere. It's probably gonna be a custom for us to do that. Um, me, myself, and my team take a lot of pride in, in what we do and what we accomplish. And um, it, it's, it's worked well for us and we've got a pretty good following from that. Um, and with that, um, from the things that I've posted and people knowing me and everything, I constantly have questions from people about um, the business and how to get into the business and everything. And those of you that know me, um, I am I love real estate and I'm fairly willing to talk about it with with anyone and share you know whatever information I might have um, on real estate. Um, I am very very. Um, my approach is pretty much the same um, for all the deals I do. I don't really waver from that. I don't try to go outside those bounds. 
I try, I don't try to make something fit where it won't, won't fit. If the numbers don't work, the numbers don't work. And I'm not going to do the deal. I'm not going to try to go outside myself to make a deal happen. Um, and for you wholesalers out there that have the opportunity sometimes that you look at a, a piece of property or a, a house, look deeper into it. You know, the house may be the least valuable thing on the piece of property. The piece of property may be worth way more than the house is. And the person that you're that you're buying it from may or may not know that. But you need to know that. And you need to also think about that when you are shopping these deals to people, because you may be shopping a deal that to a developer may be, may be worth more than what it could be to a house flipper. Not to say that there's anything wrong with flipping houses. I've flipped houses before. But understanding, if you understand what that is, then you have insight in saying, hey, you know, this is great and all, but it could be worth more this way or that way. I'm going to give you a case in point. So we bought a, a property um, that had a house on a large lot. Um, we were able to split the lot, sell the house, and we still have the lot that's worth probably only $150,000 less than the actual house and lot that we sold. Because we realized that, hey, this lot is big enough, and if we want to, we can develop the lot or we can sell the lot. But that was because we understood, hey, here's the zoning. Here's the size of the lot. Do we have enough room for another house? Yes, we do. Let's buy the house that was overpriced. Split it. We have an extra lot. We go back and sell that house. That is the difference in understanding. Um, that's the difference in, in understanding, you know, what things are worth and what they're not worth. So. That's what I want you guys to really understand about valuation of real estate. It is the key, the 100% key to understanding before you go down the road of development to see where you're starting from. If you don't know where you're starting from, if you don't know the valuation is when you get started, it's going to be very difficult for you to get to the end. Okay? So that being the case, what I'm going to do is see if I can open this up for questions. Let's see here. Let's see here. Question answer. Give easy access to questions. Got it. All questions. All this. So if you have questions, I think you can. Um, let's see here. I think. Oh, I can ask a question. Look at that. Um, Has anyone ever done a land development deal? Anybody? Um, you're going to have to write back in the comments. I turned everybody's mic off so I don't have to hear everybody. So write in the comments. Has anyone ever done a development deal at all? What's Okay, I got one from Sonia Oliver. What's the best way you think you can help developers build? You think we can help developers build an Alamance? Um, I don't know. I don't know much about Alamance, um, but I will tell you if you're trying to if you're trying to develop in any municipality, um, the first thing you can do is first understand the zoning ordinance, and it might be Greek to you at first when you first get it, um, but if you keep under you keep looking at it and trying to digest and understand um, what the zoning ordinance is saying, you can find a sweet spot. Um, that could possibly, you know, net you a very good development opportunity. Um, what is this? Um, I bet you're excited about the you, the new UDO and what are your thoughts? I'll be honest with you. I'm not really excited about the new UDO. I think the new UDO is going to hamper. Um, the new UDO is supposed to supposedly give you the ability to, you know, put a duplex on any lot. But if you look at the actual... Um, um, the actual parameters for what these duplexes are, the size limitations, the height limitations, and other things are not really going to, it's not really to spur urban development and density. And what Charlotte really needs close to its core is density. Um, we need denser, um, we need denser development so people can utilize the streetcar, uh, 
the light rail system. If you guys notice all the development that happens along the light rail, it, it's not by accident. It's because that is where people can easily get to transportation to make their way to, to um, work, to play, to food, all those things. All right, here's... Do you think do you think that the R part would finally be removed in the UDO? It hampered me from trying to do a, spl a split of my lot in R5. Okay. Um, so again, with those zoning restrictions, you have to understand what's allowed in, in, in each particular district. R5 is a tough district to 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 zone to to get density out of because I think, let me go back to it, I think. But the minimum size for R5 for a duplex is 10,000 square feet. 10,000 square feet. That's a 50 by 200 lot. That's a big lot. It's a really big lot. Um, really, really big lot. Those are hard to find, especially in urban areas. You're going to be hard pressed to find a 50 by 200 foot long lot in an urban area. It's going to be difficult to do. And that's why that R5, most of the time when people bring you something R5, I'm not interested. R8 and above is really what I look for. Um, okay, you are going to advise the community. Okay, you're giving advice to, okay. Oh, you're giving advice to young Kenneth, full of aspiration, but frustrated on how to get started. What advice would you give him? Um, the first thing, um, first thing I would tell him is what I've told you guys tonight. This is the first step. You have to understand valuations. If you don't know what you're buying, you can't buy. Um, after that, I would really look at trying to figure out what you can do. After you figure out what can be done with a lot, what can be done with a lot, figure out how to do that thing. If you find a lot and you look and you're like, hey, Kenny, this lot is, is zoned properly. I can fit four units on it. But it's got a single family house. Like, how do I go about doing that? Um, you, you start with a surveyor and getting it subplatted and figuring out what can be done there. Um, and sometimes that's all you have to do. A survey, split the lot up as long as you have the frontage. That might be all you have to do. Other times there are more things. Um, next question here. Da, 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 da. Yes. Mr. Gaddy, yes, it does. The new UDO does reduce density, um, and and that's not going to help us. Um, which areas are you are you eyeing next, Kevin? <laughs> of course, you'd ask that question. <laughs> well, um, I, I I am eyeing areas that um, present value, but also proximity. Um, so, as you guys know, South End area is exploding that direction. I don't think it's dead, but I think that the, the opportunity to get in there and, and find something that's a decent deal is going to be difficult. Um, I think the Western Corridor, um, with the announcement of the new light rail going down towards the West, I think the expansion, if you guys haven't been down Wilkinson Boulevard lately, I would pay attention. Wilkinson Boulevard, if you go down Wilkinson Boulevard, you get to Remount Road, you go over one block, you're at West Boulevard, the next block is South End. Um, and for right now to be in the same proximity to the city and at a much lower price point. So for me, anything from probably West Boulevard all the way over to Freedom, um, as close into the city as possible would be, a, I think, an area of promise. Just because if you look back on Thrift Road and back over behind Wesley Heights and over where I am in Seversville, there's a lot going on over there. There's a whole lot going on over there. A whole lot. Um, let's see here. All right, Donald. What suggestions on financing with JV, transitioning development, form brokerage side, joint deals? As far as JV is concerned, um, I'll be honest. I've learned from a long time ago from a, a mentor. You only JV when you have to. If you don't have to JV, don't JV. Just don't do it. Um, but I think understanding if you can get together with a team with a person that brings equal value to the equation, if you have someone that can do the uh, 
the legwork that understands what has to happen in order to get to where you need to get to understanding what has to be done with the surveys or with the city in submitting plans and things like that. That is a great resource to have. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Um, Dwayne Turner. Yes. I will be recording this. I will make this available once I figure out how to do that. Um, do you feel there is a need in the marketplace for land development friendly lenders who are finding easy to funding land? Um, so Eric, uh, I feel like there is a marketplace for land development friendly uh, lenders, but I will tell you this, there are developers out there, uh, uh, lending institutions that are developer friendly, but I will tell you land is a, raw land especially, is a an asset class that a lot of lenders are very shy about because they know very little about it. They know, they know very little about it. However, if you go through the process, you can, you can you can add value um and it, there's arbitrage to be done there and i'll explain um so for instance we're doing a project now we bought the project um we bought the land they appraised the land okay then we separated our development project into two loans an a and d loan and then a vertical construction loan your a and d loan is your your um is your um your purchase and your development. So what happens is you do a, an A and D loan to cover the purchase price, if you haven't bought the loan already, and then whatever it costs to get it pad ready. So once you have that project pad ready, now you go back in and say, okay, well now I have the infrastructure for 14 townhomes. I have the road for 14 townhomes. I've got the sediment ponds, storm water and sewer, and I've got 14 pads now. Now they'll go back in and reappraise that land for the improvements you made, and they can let that be the equity prove up for the rest of your development. That makes sense, Eric. So that's that's a way to to, to kind of do that. Um, let's see here. What is the best way to get in touch with you? Because my focus is just land. Um, anyone that can reach out to me on Facebook. Um, that's that's probably the best way. Um, I'll share my email address possibly too um all right what is the average cost this is this is mr nevo um good guy um what is the average cost for a new duplex multifamily construction de development deal so i will tell you most of my um most of the things that we do now as far as duets um on the low end probably we're about seven hundred thousand as far as as far as sales cost i mean sales price to probably about 850,000 per unit. That, the amount is gonna be based upon really the details, what you put in it. Again, we are trying to do, I am trying to reach highest and best use all the time. So if I can squeeze $850,000 out of a unit, I'm not trying to get 600,000, I'm trying to get 850,000. So with that, as your, your, your target price for what you're trying to get go up, your costs are gonna go up. I will tell you guys this, you cannot be cheap and expect to make the best on your you, you can't do it you can't you can't go you can't have it both ways you can't say i'm going to be cheap but i want the highest and best price for this particular project you either sacrifice and say hey i'm going to spend more money so there is no question when i put my sales price out there that it is worth what they're buying it for or you can put cheap things in there and hope people aren't paying attention and, and hope that you get your money. So I like to say you can pay or worry or you can pay and worry. I'd rather pay and not worry. Okay. Um, let's see here. Luigi Joseph. Wow. Um, Donald. Okay. You've had enough questions. Uh, let's see here. Luigi Joseph, have I done anything in Miami, Florida? No, I have not done anything in Miami, Florida as of yet, but I am not opposed. Um, <laughs> what is your price per square foot looking to build the duplex right now? So, um, Audrey, I will tell you, there's a question that people ask me all the time. I don't have a price per square foot. And the reason why is because the devil's in the details. Anyone that has done uh, flips or construction or whatever, um, DeWan can tell you this. Um, I can have a kitchen set of kitchen cabinets that can cost you $8,000. I have a kitchen set of kitchen cabinets that cost you $40,000. I 
I can have countertops that cost you forty dollars a square foot. I can have countertops cost you one hundred dollars a square foot. I got tile that can cost you. So I don't get in those conversations. We look at plans and see really what you know what the person is really looking for. And to be honest with you, I do not do retail work. My my partner would kill me if I ever do any retail work again. We we develop and we sell our own product. Um, I have some people I can refer you to if you're looking to do do some stuff, but we are not we're not in the business of doing any retail work. We don't really work for anybody else. Um, let's see here. Any advice for patient private lenders that will leave and to keep funds tied up for the totality of the project? Um, so on the funding side, guys, and this is something that um, I think everybody struggles with, and there's no there's no quick fix, okay? Either you're going to get expensive money for people that want to eviscerate you and take advantage of you, or you're going to get patient money for people where you have a track record and you've proven that you really don't need their money. There's no kind of in between. Um, and the cure for expensive money is to go fast. Okay. Um, if you want to get into the construction side, and again, I, the construction side is fine. It's fine. I love what I do. I love creating the things. I love leaving those things there. I, I love seeing them later and everything. But the construction side, the margin in the construction side is not what it is in the development side. I make my money on the deal when I sign when I buy it because I know I've made a great land deal. If I don't make a dime on the construction, I will make money on the deal because I've made a great land deal. And if you guys want to do construction and development, then you need to really make sure that you under understand both sides of that. And you don't have to necessarily have a license. Um, I did this for years without a license. I finally got my license. But you do need to understand that piece. If you send any GC, and, and there are great GCs out here, there's some on this call um, out there, and, and some people can execute, and some people are not, can't execute, and they can ruin your project. So if you wanna go down the construction and development path, um, then fine, I think you can, but you need to make sure you understand what you're asking someone to do on the other side. There's nothing I ask anyone to do that I don't understand how to do. I can walk through any project that I have with a set of plans and, and point out and show anybody anything that I expect them to do. If there's a point load on the plans, I know where it is. If there's a thickened footing on the plans, I know where it is. If there's a shaft liner wall on the plans, I know where it is. So you, if you want to go into that part, then I expect you to have the same type of due diligence and same type of um, degree of of detail on the construction side as you do on the development side. Um, what is this right here? How many multi-family families are you keeping in your portfolio a year? Um, I don't keep any projects. We build and we sell. Um, Sam's on, I don't know if she can answer this, but I think we have between 32 and 40 doors on our books this year um, that we have ongoing. Um, and that's basically what that is. Uh, Michael Darby, what is the rezoning process like and the likelihood of approval? Um, as far as rezoning is concerned, it really depends on your project. If you are trying to stretch way beyond the bounds of what is necessary or, or usable in an area, then more than likely you're not gonna get approved. You're, you're just not. Um, there is an area plan for the whole city of Charlotte. Each zone has their 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 area plan and they have a distinction in there what they want to see as far as development if you follow that and also if you precursor anytime you're looking at development uh, development i would there's a submittal process where you can go to the planning department and talk to them and they will tell you pretty much if they will support your development or not and if they will support your development you have a greater likelihood of it being passed another big part of that is the neighborhood if you are trying to get something done where people, a lot of opinionated people are, it's going to be difficult. You can't make everybody happy. If you're trying to develop near Dilworth, good luck. Um, if you're trying to develop somewhere where people care a little bit less, a lot better chance of opportunity for that happening. Because if you're in a, if you're in a neighborhood that's blighted and not great, people, for the most part, want better things to happen. But the reason why the UDO and, and, and these changes are, are happening is because everybody doesn't want to duplex next to them 
Myers Park doesn't want duplexes. They don't want that. Um, so that's why the UDO is kind of going kind of the way it is. Um, what is what else we got here? Da, da, da. Danielle Dumas, what is the best platform to search for land? Um, I'll be honest with you. I get a lot of land deals basically from basically relationships. Um, I've met people through posting the things that we, we do. Um, and that's it. That and relationships and letting know people know that you're interested in land. Um, that and being able to close. If you're someone that can can actually close on what you're looking at, makes a huge difference. Um, do I use spray foam in my development? Yes, my modern projects, we use almost exclusively um, spray foam. Dwayne Turner, what is your preferred methods of process of running comps on land? I have a very inexact process for running comps. Zillow, um, Zillow, uh, whatever, Trulia, whatever. That's the basics. I'll go through and see what's sold recently. Um, also, too, I make my realtors work for me. If you're a realtor for me and you want to, um, if you want to sell for me, then you're going to have to do some work. It's not just about collecting a check when I build something really nice. It's about, hey, hey, Jamie, what do you think this is going to be worth? What do you think that's going to be worth? What do you think the other is going to be worth? Those kind of things. How difficult is to find um, land deals nowadays, Kevin? Um, I'm... I am still finding, we're still finding deals. Um, I think part of the reason why um, is because we look at deals from a different lens possibly than other people. Um, we did a, a, a deal, um, we bought those three lots for 700,000. And even at the time I was like, man, three lots, $700,000. I'm like, uh, this is a good deal or not a good deal. It ended up being a great deal because I got four pads out of it. Um, and we'll probably out of that deal, hopefully, Gross for all the projects, we should gross probably 3.6, 3.7 million. So it just really depends. We're also looking at other markets too. We've had um, some requests for us to come to Wilmington, which we're very intrigued by. Um, there are also outlying areas. I think Mount Holly is a solid place. I think Belmont's a solid place. We've done something in Belmont. Um, so I, I still think there are deals out there to be had, but I think also too the fact that we focus on the land is a very different context from a lot of people. Um, all right, Roy, when you said duplex or quad, is there usually a HOA that has been created who generally performs a maintenance in, in perpetuity? Okay, so um, the great thing about townhomes is townhomes, you actually are selling the person both the lot and the structure and if you do something like a duet for instance most of the time you can just give the exteriors to each one of those people and they're responsible for their own exterior the only time i would form an hoa is when it's a necessity when you either have to have some common area and when i say common area common area may mean common driveway you have to have easements across to get to one place to the other and what we usually do is we set the hoa um up um, legally set up the HOA. And then what we do is we give that HOA over to the people that we sell the project to. So after that point, they are in control of the HOA. They're in control of how the, the, the grass gets mowed, um, you know, when the exterior gets painted, all those things. They become control of that. Now, um, for the larger townhome project that we're doing, we're going to create a, a there is a, we're going to create the HOA. And there's going to be a management company that we we have to to help manage and run the HOA. Um, but that's that. Um, all right. Any more questions from anybody? Okay, Carol Carolinas. <laughs> when are we hosting a group meet to greet? to greet in person network. <laughs> Great information, thanks for your time. Well, um, I did this solely because I, I get the call for this. Well, I, I have a lot of people that say, hey, Kenny, you really should do a class, you should really do this. I really enjoy this stuff. And I wanted to see kind of what the reception would be possibly for the lowest hanging fruit. Um, we're looking at the possibility of possibly generating some more, some more content um, or doing some actual courses on different steps. Like I said, this is the lowest, this is the lowest rung for getting into development. So probably what would help me a lot is 
anyone that wants to comment on what they thought about this um, or some possibly some other subjects on the development side, we are looking at poss the possibility of, of, you know, you know, generating more content. And then also, too, I want to let you guys know that on my team, um, we have some people that are, are, are transitioning. And so since they've been on my team, they understand this process. So if you guys are looking for um, either assistance or consultant work um, for that, reach out to me. I have some people that I can probably put you in touch with that can help you get through the process. Um, people always ask me, um, you know, do I have an internship or, or can I, you know, can I, can I intern with you or whatever? You don't want to intern with me. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> you don't want to intern with me. Uh, my life is kind of hectic and crazy. Um, so no, it would, it, it would be very difficult to do that. But overall, I just wanted to, like I said, give the opportunity. I have a lot of people that call, ask me questions. This is a very, very common question. Um, I, I'm sorry too, if you're a wholesaler has reached out to me before and I get frustrated with you because you have no idea what the piece of land is worth that you're trying to sell me for way too much money. Um, so I don't wanna be frustrated with people. Um, I wanna make sure that, uh, I wanna make sure that I, I try to give them as much information as I possibly can. Um, to to you know to to make sure that when they come to me or when they come to some place else because when you when you have that proper valuation you can break it down to someone say hey listen i looked at the zoning it's zoned this um the square footage is enough to fit this many units comps over there are four hundred thousand a piece um four units that's 1.6 million that's a value at 320 hey i'll let you go i'll let it go for you to 285. and when you spit it out like that to somebody that's in the business you'll be like Okay, I can see where you're going with that. But when you come to me with a, a property and like, hey, they want 400,000 for this. And I look at it, I'm like, no. Well, what will you give me? No, that's not, we're, I'm, we're not gonna do that. That's not what we're gonna do. Um, so that's what I implore most of you guys to do is, is really is go that, go that route and understand what you're doing. How's interest rates affected new construction? Um, Kevin, I don't really know yet um we we just listed um a property we, we signed a listing agreement for a property today it's at 950. i'll let you know in two weeks rather it's affected me or not i don't know um we are um we are we have a a a, a scarce niche and a scarce market not a lot of people that i've seen i'm sure people do not not a lot of people build the type product that we build a lot of I mean, there's not a lot of modern in charlotte anyway um, and I think that the level that we try to build a modern app, there's not a lot of that either. So, but also too, I don't think there's, I don't think there is a huge market for, for mar modern too. I think people that like modern, like modern. And if you don't like modern, you don't. Um, I had a guy one time, I posted one of those, <laughs> posted one of our renderings. He's like, hey, look at all those square boxes. <laughs> and I was like, Okay, you like triangles better? That's fine. I guess if you want to like if you like a triangle better than a square, then fine. Um, so um yes, Sam, we love modern builds. Um, but yeah, um, I hope everybody enjoyed this. Um, I really enjoy the time to 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 stop and talk to all you guys. I'm gonna try to set this recording up so, so you guys can see it at a later date. Please post on the the thread that's out there, either one. If you guys liked it, if you didn't like it, if I talk too much, whatever. Um, and that's it, man. If there's no more questions, um, you guys have a great night. Thanks.